Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and today I'm at the University Bookstore in Seattle, Washington with Jennifer Longo, author of What I Carry. Jennifer, welcome to Author. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. So, Jen, you, um, three books in here. Yeah. So let's go back though. So you were, so the first was not the point, it, or what was the first book? The was? first book I wrote was Six Feet Over It. Six Feet Over It, okay. But what, so you finished that book. Were you writing short stories before that? Were you, were you doing any kind of oh, creative plays. writing? Oh, plays. So I have oh, my, okay. my master's degree is in playwriting. I see. So I wrote plays and plays and plays. And Here in the Seattle area? Or? No, at, in grad school at Humboldt State. I'm from California, so I was in San Francisco. Okay. And all I did was write plays. And in fact, my first two novels are novelized versions of my grad school, pro my graduate okay. play projects. They were both plays before they became novels. So I see. that was an interesting transition. All right, so writing was the thing. Always the it thing. It was going to yeah. be writing. Yeah. And so you did, and you, did you like playwriting? I loved it. And acting was my thing. So I did acting till I was like 25. That's all I did. And I was in graduate school for acting. Mm. And then I realized I, the thing about acting that I loved was that it was a way, it was storytelling. And I still love acting, but what appealed to me were the scripts. I love reading. Play scripts aren't really meant to be read. You know, they're meant to be performed. Right. But I am nerd alert, I love to read play scripts, and so I'll sit there and read them, and I realized, God, I could, that that's the thing I loved the most, this dialogue, and I started writing, and I switched my program, and then got a master's degree in playwriting instead. Was that hard? Because I know what it is, you get an identity around something, and yes. acting is really an identity, and you totally have to invest is. in it, and people are saying you can't do it, and yep. I'm good, and all that, yeah. and you're in grad school, yeah. and that's a big switch. So I would, how, was that easy, or did you just, like, how was that? It was hard. I took I took one playwriting class, and I never felt. I always felt like a fraud. I had the, you know the imposter syndrome. Yeah, I've yeah. always loved, but I would secretly write. I have a, a banker's box just full of journals from the time I was six years old and a gold huddle pen. I journaled my way through life, like right. through therapy, and I right. love it. But I always felt like that's that's for real people. That's for like professional people. And I took a writing class and a playwriting class. Oh my god, I absolutely loved it. And one of my advisors kind of had a talk with me, and she said, you know, this is. You seem to be really good at this, at dialogue. And I'm like, that's because I can't shut up. And I like writing it down too. And she said, have you ever thought about, and I just got embarrassed. And I was like, yeah, but I'm not a, eh, I'm, I'm not, not a writer. I'm not a writer. Yeah. I'm not. And she was like, yeah, why not? And then I, she helped me switch my program and I've never been happier. So you, so you're theater, you're doing theater and, yeah. you, and you're loving it. Yeah. Were you able, did, so were you, did you graduate and say, I'm going to pursue a career as a playwright? Was that the plan? Yeah. Because, you know, there's like, but anyway, so that's, you know, yeah, and it's I, not like screenwriting or television writing, but no, playwriting. Right. Better. And yeah, it, and, and I thought I'm going to try to do this and I love it and it's beautiful. And I got a, um, a, a volunteer position that turned into a job at the um, the Magic Theater. I was the assistant to the, to the literary manager okay. and was, you know, reading plays and bringing them in. And, let me tell you something. It is really hard to get a novel published. You know, it's harder. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right? Getting well, there just a, aren't as many. There's literally published. fewer places to yeah. get it done. I've lo I've always dreamed of writing novels, and there again, it was like writing plays was sort of dipping my toe into writing. And this is something I can do because I've been an actor for 30 years. Right. Maybe I can try some playwriting. Okay, I can do that. And novels were like. That's the big dog. That's impossible. Right. And again, you go back as a woman in school. That's something that men do. That's something yeah. that white men do. I can. Yeah. No, it, you can tell a story, you can do this. It's, oh God, it was, it was so scary to start, to just like, and I started with National Novel Writing Month. I started hearing about oh, that. Did. In like the second, third year of National Novel Writing Month, I thought, all right, I wanna do this. My, my kid wow. is in preschool. She's now three days a week, three hours, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, while she's in preschool, I'm gonna write a novel. And you know what I did? I didn't tell anybody. I think that is my yeah. best piece of advice, right? They don't don't tell anybody because if you tell people what they're gonna, every time you see that I know what Thanksgiving, gonna... whatever, how's it going? How's it going? Oh my God! It, mm. And then you start thinking to yourself, Why am I not done yet? What am I? Just, 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 just yeah. Don't tell anybody. Let it be your thing. And Absolutely. That was good. Well, so let's talk about what I carry because yeah. I, I, it's, it's beautiful and oh, thank you. and but so I I, can't, I think I know the answer to this question, but I have to ask it anyway. Yeah. And I don't like to ask this question, except that it's about a, it. a young woman who's a, in foster care. Yeah. And I felt that the level of detail and and verisimilitude yeah. about things that I could not have predicted said to either she ha was in foster care herself or she did some fantastic research. 
Yeah. Because the level oh, of that's so I, nice. I, cause I couldn't tell. Makes me happy. Usually I can tell with a writer when they're they've done the research well or when they've right. lived it. And I felt like you've lived it, but I don't think right. but I don't know if that's in your biography or not. No, I was not in foster care and so I had a deep hesitation about writing this but because you did it's such a well I I don't know anybody in foster care, but God, it felt right. true to me. Yeah, it's it's always like I said, I hesitate to write something that's not my wheelhouse. There's there's sure. you don't want to push authors who are they're you know it's your own voice you're not you want right. to push people off the shelf because that's not your place i wrote this book because i adopted my daughter from foster care and as she oh, got older and okay. i've been a foster parent and my family members and so i've been steeped I in the see. foster care system for about 20 years oh so you came at it from the other side yeah my sister and there again i was like even more hesitant because you don't want adults to be telling the kids story so when my daughter got older as she's getting older we're finding there were and she also likes to read contemporary stories there aren't a lot of books, there's some beautiful fiction books about foster care. There aren't a lot that are not steeped in a lot of um, what she said, can we get a book, could you write me a book that's less yelly, that's less rapey, that's less molesty? Could it maybe not have people burning the house down? Right, right. And then I was having some conversations with some family and some friends who made me realize that there are adults the, the, the narrative about what it is to be a kid in foster care is controlled by adults and there are lies that people believe. People think kids are in foster care because they did something wrong. That's insane right, to me. Right. And the more I talked to, I was like, oh my God, what? So I wanted to write a story where the only people that I spoke to were kids in foster care or right. who had aged out of foster care. The adult narrative, my narrative as a foster parent, I don't care about that. We've had our say. Right. And we've tried to make it so that kids that are in or aged out of foster care are unreliable narrators in their own story. And you'll hear again and again from kids, no one listens to us. That's why you right. don't get the right story. So I listened to my daughter who asked me to write this and said, I'll t I said, this isn't my story. She goes, I'll tell you mine. Would you please just write this? Right. And then I was able to talk to kids who, you know, people say a writer is a professional listener and question ask her yes. and if you do that right and I've been given permission my kid is you know was 12 and she asked me this and she doesn't have a book contract I do she's like I'm giving you permission do this and so I listened to these very generous and brave people who are in and out or aged out of foster care their stories became the main character story and this is you know every story in foster every life in foster care is different so this is not a book about this is how foster care is this is one story about a kid aging out. I think it's great that, that you have that perspective and I and I hope that that you and any writers watching this don't think that telling beautiful stories that mm -hmm. aren't overtly political in nature, even though we're living in a time where politics has so dominated things, that somehow those stories shouldn't be told. I, I think that the world goes sideways when people don't do the thing they love to do. Yeah. That the more people who are just doing the thing they love to do, the better off everybody is. That's, and I don't care yeah. what it is. If it's picking flowers, it's picking flowers. And I that's think, do doing good love. in the world because there's Absolutely. so many things to feel. And that's why, you know, since that 26 thing, we felt overwhelmed because there's just so many things that need help right now. Right. And that, but, but that's the thing. You can't solve everything. You pick the thing you're good at. If I can write and tell a story, and all I think that people say that, that politics, when we talk about that, politics is just your worldview. And our worldview yes, is absolutely right. important. And keep focused on the thing that I have a friend who's obsessed with helping shelter dogs. And I'm like, excellent. Your whole life is focused on that? Great, because you're the one that can do that. We're all a member of this society. We each have a part. And now, like you said, if we each do the thing we're good at that can help other people, that's the best that we can do and not get overwhelmed. All right, well, Jennifer, it's been a fascinating conversation, but I'm not done with you. Yeah. I got one more question, and what I would like you to do is finish the sentence. Okay, okay, I'm ready. Ready? <laughs> if writing has taught you anything, all the writing you've ever done, it's yes. taught you what? Don't be afraid of the truth. People are gonna get so mad at you. And if it's, even if it's just the truth that you believe and you know in your heart, you can't be afraid. People are gonna stop speaking to you. People are gonna be angry. They're gonna push back. But especially for like the, uh, the thing I love about young adult uh, um, books is that it speaks so much to young women and your strength and your value and especially young women of color keep god we have to keep speaking the truth we have to scream it and shout it and writing has has proved to me that if you do it you're going to change something and it's scary but we cannot be scared it it works